All right, so I'm here at Longs Peak Hospital. I'm gonna uh, give everybody an update. I know a lot of people don't read past the paragraph and it's really sad. Um, so from beginning to right this second. So Patrick initially had a clot that formed into a mass in his groin area. It was almost the size of a grapefruit. He went to UC Health in Loveland and uh, they scheduled him an outpatient surgery for two months down the road. When I saw that, uh, to me, it looked like a medical emergency and I was very confused as to why they scheduled it two months down the road. Uh, less than 10 days into that two month wait, it ruptured, not just internally, but externally as well. And it blew out the artery in his leg. <clears throat> Patrick was airlifted to Aurora UC Health uh, where they did surgery, uh, they repaired that artery. After five days, Patrick was ready to go home. That probably wasn't the smartest choice. Um, I went up there, I picked up Patrick, we brought him home. Um, probably highly illegal, but Patrick was not doing better. By a miracle of God, Patrick was doing significantly better because we had a rotation of nurses going to his house and cleaning him up and taking care of him properly. I took Patrick to every single one of his outpatient appointments post-surgery. Everything on his body was healing as it should have. His health was doing significantly better and everything was looking good. I took Patrick to his fourth appointment. On his fourth appointment, they were worried about uh, blood pressure and levels of something I don't remember. And so they wanted him to go to UC Health in Longmont uh, for a checkup uh, to test something and to do lab work. And so he comes to UC Health in Longmont and and the next morning he calls me, I would say probably around 10, 30, give or take, and tells me that a nurse's aide had came in there and told him that they were working on his discharge papers, but it, no nurses had came in yet at all and no doctor has came in that day at all to see him. And so when I show up, I walk in the room and I immediately notice that his catheter bag is not just overflowing, but leaking onto the floor. I've never seen anything like that before. And so I was like, what the fuck is this? And so the nurse's a he pages the nurse and, and, and he was being an ass and, and he was like, what the fuck is going on? You guys told me that I was leaving here hours ago. Nobody's came in here and checked on me. If nobody comes in here, I'm going to take out my own fucking IV. And so he takes the tape off and he ends up, I, I told him not to take out his IV. And that nurse's aide comes back in the room and she's like, hey, Patrick, your nurse told me that you're going to take out your own IV. So I'll help you with that. She had me come in here and help you. And so as she's trying to take off his ID, I'm making sure that his catheter, the line to the catheter wasn't leaking onto his bed and so i pulled the blanket and when i pulled the blanket and i haven't updated and i haven't told anybody about this and even the reason why patrick has lost his leg because i didn't want to embarrass patrick but i have patrick's permission when i pulled the blanket off from patrick's chest all the way down to his under his knees was completely covered in liquid diarrhea that had completely hardened and dried there was also no smell in order for it to harden and dry the way it did and for the smell of shit to go completely away to where there was no existing smell of shit, that happened to him the night before. I didn't notice until a group member pointed it out yesterday, but that catheter bag that he has in that photo at 1 p.m. is a nighttime bag. That means that nobody had came into his room from nighttime until 1 p.m. What happens with those catheter bags. And we'll, actually, we'll jump to that in a second. And so, because of the feces all over his body, all of that feces was inside the wound from the artery surgery that he had a month prior that he was almost completely recovered from, and that is not why he was in the hospital. And 72 hours after he is covered in his own shit, he has a disgusting infection from the shit in his wounds, and then they had to remove his leg. Um, Patrick, if he did not go to C UC Health, Patrick would have two legs. If Patrick didn't go to UC Health, they would have treated a grapefruit-sized mass as a medical emergency 
and he and none of this would have happened if they would have removed his catheter bag that catheter bag wouldn't have reversed back into his body causing him sepsis originally i thought that patrick had an overdose patrick called me three days ago and he's and he sounded on top of the world he sounded great and uh and then halfway in the conversation he was like hey look i do got to tell you something charlie the reason i'm calling is this morning when i woke up my stump was hurting worse than it has been and so instead of taking one of my pain pills i took two and i was like patrick that's not i mean you don't want to do that all the time but that's not a big deal and i said that's fine and he goes well that's not the problem he goes when i took two it kind of fucked me up a little bit and i fell asleep and when i woke up I forgot that I had taken them, and so I took two more. And I was like, all right, well, that's not great. I said, but typically, Patrick, when somebody eats three or four pain pills and they don't wake up the next day, it's because they were drinking a lot of alcohol with the pain pills. I said, you don't drink. I said, you should be fine. Just have Cindy watch you. And 20 minutes later, him and Cindy call me on speakerphone. Patrick is pouring sweat, uh, like, so much that, that it completely soaked all of the fabrics that they were trying to like keep him cool with. Um, his heart was beating uncontrollably out of his chest, uh, and and he he was fighting for his for his breaths. And so I tell Cindy, take me off speakerphone. I say, hey, look. I said one of two things is going on with Patrick right now. Either he is having a small overdose. I said, um, which is fine. I said, just call an ambulance. He's he's not going to die or anything. Um, I said, or because he took four of those things, he started feeling a little funny and, uh, he threw himself into a panic attack. I said, either way, call an ambulance. Ambulance takes him back to UC Health Longmont where they tell Cindy and Patrick, oh, this is, he has pneumonia. I'm, I'm not a medical professional. I am understand that I'm arrogant as fuck sometimes. And I understand that I do sometimes talk like I'm smarter than other people. This isn't a Charlie is smarter than other people. This is Charlie's fucking right. You don't develop pneumonia in 20 minutes. There is not an illness on the planet that takes you from perfectly fucking healthy to the most extreme of that illness in 20 minutes. I don't even think that the fucking most extreme, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you even have that after a rattlesnake bite, the most extreme in 20 minutes. Um, he doesn't have pneumonia. And so then yesterday, they were treating him all day and then they switched his medical team and his new doctor told me that they were treating him for long-term COVID. Pat, this is not long-term COVID. So everything that Patrick has going on, and, and again, I'm not smarter than medical professionals, uh, but I read a lot and I've read a lot about the topic and everything that is going on with Patrick from day one that he left to where his bladder wasn't working, his kidney wasn't working, he had brown urine, then he had four days of utter confusion where he didn't know what day it was, didn't know if he took his medicines. Uh, I had to repeat every conversation like he was a dementia patient. And then the, even the episode that we thought was maybe an overdose. Every single one of those is septic shock. And the reason of that type of septic shock is from all of his urine going back inside of his body. And so literally every single fucking thing this place could do to kill somebody, they have successfully done. Last night, they put Patrick into a medically induced coma that Patrick woke up from an hour later. Patrick is awake. I'm here at the hospital. I'm going to break him out of the hospital. We're going to send him to a different hospital. If there's anybody up here that wants to come help me to make sure that I don't get any legal trouble, I'm going to act like a normal fucking human and I'm not going to act like a fool. Um, but Patrick needs our help. After this, I, I'm, I'm taking a fucking break for a little while. Um, I love pets. I love animals. Uh, the girl that asked for help, that was me. I dropped the ball. And so I felt an obligation because her dog died that, that we should raise money and we should have. Um, animals aren't fucking first place to people. Uh, I've raised $95 for a dying fucking human being in the last five weeks to raise $130 almost in, in three hours for a dog that's already passed away. I think that that group member is awesome. I think she deserves it. 
Uh, but human life needs to come before animal life. I, I can't put myself on the line anymore and, and see the level of, of how much humanity doesn't care about anybody because if I didn't have kids, it would probably drive me to a point of fucking suicide. Um, so other than the relationships that I've already built in the group, and, and I hope everybody knows who those people are, if you've been to my house, if I've been to your house, if we have real conversations that aren't Facebook related, then, then I definitely want you in my life. Outside of that, I, I don't want new people in my life. Um, it, it, it's, it's created a lot of fucking burden on my family. Um, on this situation, I will not back out because I've definitely put myself in a situation um, and, I've, and I've obligated myself to that situation. And until Patrick either has a full recovery or until Patrick passes away, uh, I will not leave Patrick's side. Um, the, the community isn't a community without people being involved in the community. It, it's not a hard thing to, to care about another human being. Uh, I don't expect anybody to do what I've done and, and bury themselves and bury their families financially to help other people. I don't expect that. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to, to just be a human being. Nobody should ever have to go through this shit by themselves. Nobody should ever have to go through it alone. If there are people that do want to help, it, it would be greatly appreciated. The thing is, is that this hospital knows what they've done. Uh, I, I didn't learn about septic shock in, in five hours of every single step along the way. Everything that's been going on with his body is septic shock. Um, it, they're treating him for COVID. They're treating him for pneumonia. They're treating him for everything other than septic shock because when Patrick dies, they could try to pretend that they didn't fuck up. And this was Patrick's fault for not wanting to stay at a hospital where he was covered in human feces for an entire day.